Hello, this is Jeff Rahm from G4 Geomatic Resources in Houston, and today we're going to do a quick video on basic field data collection using a network rover on the SmartNet network. So uh, the SmartNet is a network correction. Uh, it's really important that we're on the internet, and uh, we can use, in this instance, we're going to use a GS18 tilt uh, to go out there and do some basic topo data collection, click some points in code. Um, real quickly, um, there's been some a lot of advancements in satellite tracking, and um, recently, uh, the last couple of years, Beidou's made a huge impact. Um, so it's like a screenshot just to show how many Chinese or Beidou satellites we can see in the Houston this is back in 2022. Um, the three frequencies that we track, and this shows the number of satellites for our GPS, Beidou, uh, Galileo, and GLONASS. And so we'd really recommend to update the latest firmware and add the Beidou option for the network to really improve your productivity. This just shows just a screenshot. Um, if we're using IMAX, we can now use the Chinese as well. And then once again, if you have a GS16 or 18, we're, we can track eight satellites, GPS four with the L5, and then with Galileo, multiple frequencies, four frequencies, and Beidou as well. And this really increases our uh, ability to, to take shots in places we couldn't get before. This is just a quick shot. Later on, we'll show it on the data collector. Just the, we can do a sky plot and take a look at the Galileo, which is European, Beidou's Chinese, GLONASS is Russian, and GPS is US to show the number of satellites in the, uh, that we're tracking at any time. In this example here, there's a total of 23 satellites being used. Okay, we're set up outside and we have a GS18 hooked up to the CS20. First thing I do is create a job. So I can come down here and hit uh, jobs, F6, F2 new, and we'll call the job 4-10 for today's date. And we'll take a look at the properties. We'll page over, and I got Texas South Central. This is the state plane we're gonna work in. Page over to code list, we got a code list, and this is where you can link jobs if you wanted to. And then we'll hit F1 store. That'll store the job we'll be on the carousel and we'll hit the OK button. And now that job pops up here. I can now hit function or we'll hit the function key here and lock. And that'll lock that job. I can simply toggle that to unlock it if I want to unlock that and change it. But if it's locked, it, it reduces the risk of me changing jobs by mistake. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do now is we'll take a quick look. We're interfaced to the GPS receiver. We've got 23 satellites. If I click up here, it says G, R, E, and C. That stands for GPS, Russians, Europeans, and Chinese. And the satellite tracking icon, we then dig deeper. And this is GS18. It's got L1, L2. Hit the More button, and you can see which ones have L5. Same with Galileo. Um, we got E1, hit the more button. The old BOC has got four frequencies, and Beidou has three frequencies. Uh, if you're using like an older GS14, uh, you might not have all the triple frequencies like we see here. Um, that's important. I want to keep track of my satellites. Uh, I might take a look if I have six Europeans and five Chinese. That's a good time to hit some tougher environments like next to trees. How do I check the firmware version? Just under settings. About Captivate and um, hit the Leica Captivate tab and it'll page over and show right now we're on 8.3. It'll also show this when you boot up. If you want to take a look at the serial numbers, just go to these tabs for the CS controller. There's a serial number, the equipment number, and if it's interfaced in Bluetooth, the same with the GS sensor. All right, right now we're on the internet and here's our signal strength. So it's really important. Uh, we'll click on here, hit internet status, and there's a checkbox. Uh, if there's a problem with the SIM card, it'd stop here. If you page over the device, it sort of gives a run the 4G and the signal strength down here, which is very handy to look at. If we weren't on the internet, there'd be a triangle box up here, uh, orange triangle box to indicate that we have internet problems, and that could be a bad SIM card, a deactivated SIM card, or you're in an area where there's no internet. And since we're using the, the network correction right now, uh, this is very critical, make sure we're on the internet. I'll hit the star key, and I have hotkeys here. Number one is work style. 
and I've got two work styles, number one IMAX and number two near. And that's how fast I can switch from one to the other. So we'll keep it on the IMAX. And then when I wanna dial in, like right now, I've got my 1D and 2D quality. So the 1D is vertical, 2D is horizontal. If I click on here, then you got 3D in my rod height. And I can, to dial in, I can just click and hit start streaming data. I'll create a hotkey as well. It'll take around 10 seconds, the arrow will start pumping. And the big circle for my position will then go to semicircle. And then when it fixes, it goes down to a little uh, arrow and uh, across. And once again, my CQ values, my 1D and 2D are now down to the hundreds. Um, and I could change that as well. If I wanted to see that in metric, the star key, regional settings, and then change that from feet to meters. Okay? And so it really depends on which units you want to work in. Okay, so that's how fast we can change that. I can create a hockey if I wanted to, or the regional settings is a quick way I can change my units. Um, for area, and also how I want to see my slopes and my angles. Okay, so that's a handy hotkey to have. So right now we're um, we're fixed. Uh, we're in the job 4-10, and I can now page over to my measure screen, and we're now ready to take a shot. So I come in here. I've now got line work turned on, so I page over to my second tab, and um, let's take a quick look at the first tab. There's my point ID and my rod height. So I want to make sure I got the right rod height. Type that in. And once again, if you're in metric, you can change that as well. And we'll page over. And if I had a code here, like CP, we'll go through the code list and I'll pick that and show that code. And that's how I can now code that point. And to take a shot, we'll just hit measure. Okay? So right now we have tilt. The compensation is off. We'll say yes. Let's take a shot. Point stored. And we'll store that point. And what we're going to also look is up here, it shows the uh, job that we're doing, 4-10. I can click on here, then it'll show the base station and the first point that we shot in. Okay. Now if I want to shoot that point again um, and average it, I can hit Function, Tools, and hit Closest Point, and it'll take me back if I can page over here to point number one. And the, the code's sticky, and we'll measure that point again and take a shot. Point stored. And that point's now stored. If I create a hotkey, uh, F8, to look at point management, we can edit that point and take a look at the coordinates. Uh, the code, if you had the wrong code, we can change it here. The mean will then show the difference between those two shots that we're averaging. If we exceeded the averaging limit, then um, we'd have a warning popped up by the software. And that's how fast it is to take a shot. Um, I can now click on here and center and then zoom in on myself and the points that we shot okay so right now and right now I've got a, a bunch of points in the background um, that's my design job so once again if I escaped out of here and we came over and uh, unlocked that job hit function home my design job that's going to show me the jobs that from that 313 that are now shown up in that measure screen so this is a great trick. If I if I was gonna had a previously surveyed in 313 and I now wanna add more points to it, I can now see those points that I already shot in the background under my measure screen. And that's what we're seeing right now, those points in the background, okay? And that's how fast it is we can take shots. Um, we have other videos on line work. Once again, if I hit the function tools, uh, measure hidden points, we have other videos on how to measure hidden points and line work. And we have a code template as well. So I've got a hotkey set up for hit star. I can say load code template and I've got a topo code template lined up and then this shows my most commonly used codes I, I use for doing topographic surveys. I can just quickly go around and shoot in like top of slope, toe of slope, wood fence, high bank and all that good stuff. And then once again all my points will then show up on this screen if I hit function display, I'll tell it don't include the RTK base station under points. I want to see my point ID, codes, and then that will display all that information so you can see my code is CP right on that point. Now what we can also do if I hit the star key, um, I can inverse stream points, view and edit, export ASCII, 
current position will show me how far I am from the base station. So if I click on here, it's going to show my current position, my quality. The baseline, the second tab, that shows me we're now 30,000, 31,000 feet from that base station. So the further I get away, my CQs will raise up. And um, also the tilt. Right now, tilt's turned off, but my tilt value, once I start walking around, around after 30 feet or 10 meters, this will turn green and then this will be down under, I want it to be down under 45 minutes for accurate tilt measurements. And what's also neat is I can hit the star button and um, we could create a hotkey on here to turn tilt off and on. Right now it's not set. I'll hit quality control and I'm now taking shots here that are instantaneous and I could increase that or I can turn off the automatically stop and sit on that point for a lot longer. So I want to sit on that point for like 45 seconds once again, call it point number one, hit measure, and then it'll come up and say time at the point. So I can just let that go. For right now, I'll just go for 10 seconds, stop and store it, and store that point. Point stored. And now we've got three measures on the points, and the difference is okay. So that's a quick overview on how to create a job, how to take a shot. Now, what I can do now is export the data. So what we'll do now What's really important is when you finished your survey, always hit, come up here and hit stop streaming data. Always hang up before you turn off your data collector. And, uh, data and if you're going to switch from IMAX to near, then it's also important to hang up and hit the star key. Work style on the main screen. I can switch now. Uh, okay. Visualization to near, near correction. Okay. Hit next. Connection to GS sensor lost. Back in. But it's also important to hang up or disconnect, and then when you connected to you're going to change to the near, and that would be a case if there's bad weather or if you're out in an area where there's not a bunch of base stations, and then I can just click on here and start streaming data. Now to export data, here's my project here. I can just click on here and say transfer job. Uh, TK initialized. And I'll transfer right now. I got an SD card. If I had a USB, then hit OK. They'll transfer all my data from the uh, data collector to the SD card or to the USB. I can also click on here or hit the star key and create a hotkey to say, right, uh, export ASCII. And then I can export an ASCII, either internal or SD card. And right now it's point number northern, east, and height code. I can also hit function settings. And I can customize the order. So I have common limited, point number northern, east, and height. If you want east and northern, just change that order. It'll be reflected here in the example. I'll hit OK. And now that data is going to be exported to the SD card under the data subdirectory. The job data will be under the DBX. So that's a quick way to collect points, export an ASCII, or export a job file to complete a quick survey. Okay, um, and just to improve accuracy, like we talked about here in the averaging, we can use a tripod carrier and height hook if you wanted more stability. Uh, in this case, we used a bipod on a two meter pole. I'd also recommend, if possible, use an IMAX solution. Uh, it's a little bit more accurate than the near. And once again, we used all the uh, GPS, Galileo, all the four different constellations really help out. Uh, take your cutoff angle. Uh, you want to have at least 15 degrees. And the longer you sit on the point, the more accurate it is. Some guys will sit on there for at least 45 seconds. Um, and some clients might go like 180 seconds. And like in the, in the video we did earlier, we took mobile shots on the point. Uh, it's also important you can come back maybe four hours later, a couple hours later, shoot it in again, and you have uh, more of a averaging around around your uh, true position. Also, uh, keep your uh, observations as wide open as possible. So uh, don't set your truck up. Try to keep your truck parked 100 feet away and keep as far away from metal objects as possible. And uh, if possible, avoid working in bad weather. If there's storms, specifically lightning, close by that can affect the accuracy of your RTK positions as well. Okay, let's take a quick look at tilt. Um, let's just discuss tilt. So um, why do I want to use tilt when I'm topoing? If I can get inaccessible points, maybe a point that's underneath a car, uh, a pole, side of a building, or maybe there's a point underneath the fence I need to get. And once again, when we walk around for that 35, 40 feet, uh, the icon will turn green. And that's just um, a real simple way of how do we calibrate that GPS 18, um, the IMU. 
it's going to be turned on. And if I walk uh, 35 feet or 10 meters, the uh, cross will turn green, and that means the tilt compensating stops have started. Uh, if you ever stop and lay the rod up against the fence, always walk that dirt 35 foot or 10 meters before you take another shot. Okay, and once again, we'll use this for data collection. Okay, um, we're not going over tilt real fast. So right now, I can see on the screen, I have a, uh, see how the uh, cross has turned green? And that means tilt's turned on. And what I can do is, um, how I had that activated with the IMU, it's also important to work, walk a good 35 feet, walk around and, and get, get the uh, GS18 moving. If I hit the star key and hit current position, and once again, we'll take a look at the, the last values of tilt. And right now, I'm moving around. And you can see when I move around, the overall tilt quality on the second line is coming down. So if I walk 35 feet, once again, I want that to, to get down around 40, 40 minutes or a little bit less. And that allows me to then take shots, like for control points and so forth, that um, be a lot more accurate with the tilt. So just remember, walk that 35 feet um, or 10 meters, and once again, you don't have to monitor this every time, but I just want to show you when we move it around how that drops. And then once again, if I hold it still, we'll start seeing how that will start raising up. So once again, uh, if you lay this up against the fence, um, walk that 35 feet, 10 meters before you take shots of importance. Make sure that tilt's okay. So the green uh, on, on the icon on the cross for your fix, I think it turns green a little bit too fast. So just walk, move around. And as you're, you're working through the day, when I start moving around, like I'm doing now, you'll start seeing that tilt accuracy will start getting more and more accurate. Once again, if you're below 40 minutes, then it's, it's perfect. You can take shots on control points, boundary points, and um, then average it just like we did earlier. So I just want to quickly show you how we can use the tilt to increase our productivity. Okay, and uh, that's a quick uh, overview on how to collect data. Once again, when we export the data, uh, if I come down here uh, to the SD card, under the DBX, that's where we exported um, our job data. And then this, all these files here can be pulled into Infinity. So it's really important to back up and copy this to your uh, computer at the end of the day. If you scroll back up under data, we exported an ASCII file, and there's the ASCII file right there. So I just want to show you on the SD card after we exported that data exactly where everything is. So I hope you found this video helpful, and uh, any questions, feel free to reach out. Have a great day.